the Lord be with you. And also with you. Our opening hymn this morning is Sing a New Song. Sing a New Song, hymn number 25 in the pew.
The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 65, verses 17 through 25. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more shall be heard in the sound of weeping and the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but for a few days, or an old man who does not fill out his days. For the child shall die a hundred years old, and the sinner a hundred years old shall be a first, that they may build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall be the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, or bear children for calamity, for they shall be the offspring of the blessed of the Lord, and their children with them. Before they call, I will answer. Before they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, the lion shall eat straw like the ox, and the dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt or destroy in my holy mountain, says the Lord. Please join me in the reading of Psalm 98 found in your hymnal by responding with a refrain. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication in the right sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and all those who live in it. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Let the floods clap their hands, let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. All the ends of the earth For many 
will come in my name saying, I am he. And the time is at hand. Do not go after them. And when you hear wars and troubles, do not be terrified. For this must first take place, but the end will not be at once. Then he said to them, Nations will rise against nations, and kingdoms against kingdoms. There will be great earthquakes and various places, famines and pestilence. And there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. But before all this will lay their hands on you, and they will persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors for my name's sake. Settle it, therefore, in your minds, not to meditate beforehand to answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be delivered up even by parents, brothers, kinsmen, and friends, and some of them will put, will put to death. You will be hated by all for my name's sake. For not a hair on your hair will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your life. God's word for God's people. Praise be to God. Never dying soul to save and fit it for the sky. 
to serve the present age, my calling to fulfill. All my way, all my powers engage to my master's will. For a charge to keep I have, O God, and a God to glorify. Then God, I ask that you let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted, God, in your sight. Dear God, I am only a piece of clay, a human being, just like these your children in this congregation. Yes, sir. But I ask God for these few moments that you decrease me, that you might increase, and let your word touch the hearts, those in your presence. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Well, I'm going to get my call out so I can time myself, y'all. But you know I can be up here for 40 minutes, no problem. <laughs> and I don't think y'all like that. Then again, you might, but I don't know. I ain't gonna get a chance. Enjoy it, I'll do it anyway. So today, as I said to you, stand firm. In, in this scripture, Jesus is really kind of going in. And so as we know that the book of Luke is the witness book, the book of investigation, we call it. It is Luke and in the book of Acts where you see the doctor, the miracle doctor, who is witnessing various things that people are sharing about Jesus Christ. And particularly in this text, Jesus basically tells us what's going to happen on this journey as a Christian. And he says, settle it in your minds, settle it in your minds, not to meditate beforehand, not to answer. For I will give you a word of wisdom which none of your adversaries will ever be able to withstand or contradict. And this is what is so powerful. He says, you, you will be delivered up even by your parents your brothers, kinsmen, and friends, mm -hmm. and some of them will put you to death. You will be hated because of my name, Satan. But not out here. It ain't got much in the shape of this morning, but it's coming back. Not a hair on your head will perish, but your endurance you will gain your lives. Hear what Jesus is saying. He's saying on this side of earth, when you speak my name, when you live my name, when you proclaim my name, you will be healed. How can we who love God and do right and help people and hold people accountable and talk about integrity, talk about perseverance. How can we be so evil? Jesus reminds us in this text to stand firm. Stand firm for the faith. My brothers and sisters, when you read about the book of Luke, you read about the New Testament, it is speaking about a new way of life. The before the word Christianity ever came to be, the theology was this new way, a new way. And what was that way? That way was that I do not have to obey 611 particular Hebrew biblical laws. That new way would be love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the laws and prophets. That new way would be a way in which the fruit of the Spirit would not be rolling on the floor and speaking in tongues in particular, but it would be love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and yet self-control. Jesus is speaking this because in this text and in this moment, Jesus is being persecuted for bringing a different way to serve God. Jesus is saying that even your parents, your brothers, your sisters will turn against you because
because you are not following the ways of all. He is saying that despite all of that, you don't have to worry about defending yourself, but I will give you the words and the wisdom to stand firm in the midst of your adversaries. See, my brothers and sisters, I, I've come to realize that you don't have to, and nor do I have to defend the gospel of Jesus Christ. It speaks for itself. If you live a life that's loving, if you live a life of integrity, if you live a life of standing firm on what you believe that is right according to God, yes, he will fight your battles. Amen. And that's what Jesus said. He said, nothing will happen to you if you stand firm. But make no mistake. Those people you grew up with, those parents that raised you, the people that knew you when, will hold and call you out. The greatest example of that, if I can go to today's time, is if an individual who has been living in a world and living a rough life and have just decided to go to God and say, listen, for God I live and for God I die. I'm not going to do drugs anymore. I'm not going to hang out with these individuals who don't have my best interest. I'm going to not cheat people. I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to show integrity. I'm going to be nice, even though you're not nice to me. Can you imagine those friends you used to hang out with, and all of a sudden you different? What they say? Huh, I knew you when you were doing this. And I knew you when you were doing that. And I knew you when you were smoking and drinking with us. When your parents, you come home and love it. Your parents are still talking about people on the phone and talking about neighbors and friends, and yet you say to them, no, I'm, I'm not going to participate in those conversations. I'm, I'm not going to participate in those things that brings another human being down. No, 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 I'm, 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 I'm going to know. For, for the grace of God, they go out. And then your parents look at you like, well, I raised you. you I'm your parent. I'm, you are my child. Jesus is speaking about this from a modern perspective about how when you begin to live for him, when you really begin to live for him, life changes. Share with a group of individuals, two groups this week. And I said to them, if you just do me a favor, they said, well, I'm going to read the Bible, Reverend Rogers. I want to learn more about who this Jesus is. I said, I tell you what, just read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's it. Out of 66 Bibles, 66 books in the Bible, just read those four. That's it. For one year. That's it. If you've got to add a little bit to your Bible study, do the Proverbs and the Psalms. I said, but if you just do that, just read those six books, I guarantee you, your life will change. You'll see the world different. You'll live different. You'll feel different. Yes, sir. You'll see different. Mm -hmm. And I say that to say that, yes, I love coming to preach. And yes, I love reading God's word. And yes, I love encouraging people. And yes, I love being with you. But if the word of God is not changing how I see the world in which I'm living in, it's all for now. This is the news. And hear me well, and you can get upset with me, and I don't care today. Amen. This ain't it. This is not it. If you think living on this earth for 96 years or 100 years is it, this is not it. We work to love one another, to encourage one another, and bring others into the kingdom. I've come to realize more and more every day is more about where I'm going than where I'm at. And that's why standing firm is so important. Don't get me wrong. I was thinking this morning, I heard Dr. Charles Stanley say, think about the person who had the greatest influence in your life on your Christian journey. And the 
person that came to mind for me and Dee and, 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 and um, Clarence Norris is Abdul Jobs. For 38 years, I could not have had more of a better friend and spiritual advisor. But I never forget what he said to me one day. We were talking about celebrating Dr. King and Malcolm X. And he said, you know, Charles, they were great heroes, but they may not be in heaven. We got to be careful who we worship. We got to worship the living God and not human beings. And it hit me. It made me realize that we need to focus more on where we're going rather than where we are. People say, well, you know, Charles, you're trying to tell me that I want to die. I'm not saying I want to live to be like a I want to live to be 96, 97. I would love to hit 100. But it would be sad to live to be 96 and not have any of you around me. Hello. See, long life don't mean a whole lot when you don't have those around you you love and you cherish and you worship. I would rather see them on the other side forever. Because forever, there's no beginning and no end. That Jesus Christ said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. There's no beginning with me and there's no end. You can't add nothing before me, you can't add nothing after me. That's the road I would choose. Chairman, who been with you this week, I said the thief on the cross had a choice. He said, do I go to paradise with Jesus or do I take an unknown opportunity? People say, why do you believe in the Christian faith? I said, because when I read Luke 23, 43, when Jesus said to the man on the cross, gee, the man on the cross was used. He said, even in my son, this is in my text, but I'm not, the Lord laid on my heart to see it with you. He said, Jesus, remember me when you enter into your kingdom. This is Luke. Jesus said, surely this day you will be with me in paradise. So I told him, Luke, better on that road than this road. But I just don't believe, Reverend Roger, it, it just doesn't make sense. Well, a lot of things don't make sense. Why do we have to wear, as Michael said, the shoes today? Why do I have to wear a coat when it's cold? Why y'all got me in robes? A lot of things don't always make sense, but we do. And so I said, it's better to go on the road that you're going to live in perfect peace and harmony for the rest of my life, whatever that is, eternally. Then to sit there and take a chance on this side and say, hmm, not sure when I'm going. I'll figure it out when I get there. Jesus is saying this in a stand firm perspective because Jesus wants us to understand that if they hate me, they will hate you. See, and I, and I mean this, one of the things that I struggle with with church is that Jesus Christ was probably one of the most hated human beings that ever walked the earth. But look what he talked about. He didn't talk about division. He talked about people coming together. He didn't talk about harming your neighbor. He told you to love your neighbor. He didn't say stop forgiving. He said forgive 70 times 7. He said, for God so loved the whole world, not part of the world, not the world that would come to him. He said, for God so loved the whole world that he sent his only begotten son for whomsoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The only example you see the possibility of a son being sacrificed is between Abraham and his son Isaac. And don't think that Abraham went to that mountain to sacrifice his son saying, I feel good about it. That man was probably bleeding tears of anguish. And when his son asked the question, where is the sacrificial lamb? Abraham said, 
God will provide. Not knowing, not knowing what the outcome will be. But God loved all of us so much that he said his only begotten son. See, that's the Christian faith. And I'm not telling you to question our faith. You can. But as Christians, we're called to exhibit, speak that, and stand firm on that. And what's the firmness of it? The firmness of it is not that we always have it together. No. You can debate on everything I just said. You can debate it. And you might win the debate. Good for you. And I might win the debate. Good for me. But I'm going to share this with you. If you're not going through something in your life, then where's your Christian journey? Look what Jesus says in this text today. He's saying that your parents will turn against you. Your children will turn against you. People will hate you because of my name. And I say that by double individuals who've had struggles and they wanted to move away from a life of crime, move out of a life of drugs, move out of a life of stealing, move out of a life of Dissension. They moved away from that and how people have shunned them. And I said, you're being shunned because you're standing for right. You're being shunned because you're standing for good. You're being shunned because you're standing for integrity. You're being shunned because you are persevering. The strongest Christian is the weakest Christian who gets on their knees. And don't have to be Satan trembles. Satan doesn't tremble when you do his bidding. He trembles when you're trying to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. I shared with somebody, I can like to go personal with you from this past week. I wasn't planning to share this, but I need to share this. Sometimes it's not good to be in the end crowd. Sometimes it's not good to be in the end crowd. I said one of the greatest gifts the Amy Church gave me with his last bishop was that he ignored me. He didn't like me. I'm grateful. I'm so grateful. Because the way he went down, many people will go down with him. When someone is powerful, and you don't know who they are in their integrity, you need to stay as far away from them as possible. Mm -hmm. What you think is rejection is actually God's promotion in your life. Amen. If God didn't show me that this last few months, he showed it better than anything. I am so grateful to God that I'm in nobody's particular service, that I am Charles Rogers all by himself. You call me Reverend Rogers, but my mother didn't name me Reverend Rogers. <laughs> Reverend Rogers is not on my birth certificate. Associate Dean retired is not on my birth certificate. Chaplain Charles Rogers is not on my birth certificate. What's on my birth certificate is Charles Anthony Rogers, not even senior. That's what's on my birth. That's what my parents named me. And I'm sharing that out of emotion about standing firm because when you stand for right and good, God will bless you. Hear what I say to you. Don't let anyone fool you. When someone wants to do wrong, let them do wrong. You do right. Somebody wants to do this way, you do left. You, you do what God tells you to do. And that's what's happening in this text today. And that's what Isaiah said. That's what Isaiah said today. That when you stand firm, that's why two people can tell me something honestly. It's the truth. And you put yourself in these categories. Put me in front of a child and put me in front of a senior. Somebody that's lived. Them two people I'm going to listen to better than anybody. Because children will tell you the truth when you don't even want to hear it. And adults will tell you the truth when you don't want to hear it. And they tell you the truth because they want you to not make the mistakes they've made. Amen. 
And children tell you the truth because that's what they know until we take them. In between, for me and for you should be suspect. And I'm not knocking any of us, even me. I don't have all the answers. What I do know in my sermon today, when he says stand firm, and I brought up that last part about this bishop. The bishop's a human being. That's what I'm trying to get you. We're all human beings. We all make mistakes. We're all flawed. But everybody wants to belong to somebody. And everybody wants to be considered somebody. And so when that person decides to move away and try to do the right thing for their life, this is what Jesus is saying. Jesus said, you're going to get persecuted from me because I live for the right. I live for the truth. When Jesus says, I've come to divide families, understand what he's saying. He said, I come to divide good from evil. When the disciples asked, I'll conclude with this, when the disciples asked the question, they said, how do we know they belong to you. How, how would you know their fruits? He said, you'll know their fruits by what they do. The fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Amen. That's why you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Christianity ain't about converting you. It's about a way of life. It's about how I want to live. Don't you want to live with joy? Don't you want to live with patience? Don't you want to live with kindness? Don't you want to live with goodness and faithfulness and gentleness? Kind you know, those are the things that emulate us. And that's what Jesus was up against because the Pharisees and Sadducees educated men and women were saying, hmm, this is Joseph's son. This is a coffin. He ain't no educated man. He don't have a degree. He don't have this. He don't have that. He don't have this. That's, that can't be God in the flesh. And when he short that way, he said, you will be divided. And so I leave you with this today. Trust God. Trust God. Glean at me as a pastor. Glean at me. But trust God. Trust God. You don't have to know God fully. But what you should know that he said, I promise I will never leave you nor be sick. Amen. And I believe that in my heart. I, I don't believe anything else. And, and I say that emotionally today because I know that many of us are going through health issues. Many of us are going through issues with our children. Many of us are going through issues about what's the next steps in our lives. Many of us are going through issues of loss and loved ones that have left us behind. But this is what I know about the Christian faith. This is what I believe in my heart. As I mourn Abdul Jarvis, um, G, um, Abdul would not want to come back here and have lunch with me compared to being in the seat. That I know. I don't know nothing else. That's what Christian faith tells me. And whether it's right or wrong, I'm going to believe it no matter what. Because he says in his word, I will give you hope and peace in the midst of everything that you're going through. So take heart. I'm telling you today, stand firm, but stand firm in the faith. Stand firm in knowing that God loves you unconditionally. He loves you. No matter no one fool you otherwise. This is my 50th of 200 more sermons. Remember that God truly loves you. And God wants you to stand firm in the faith. Just remember that. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Our next Standing on the promises of God. Hymn number 249. God's promises are true. You don't have to understand them. They perhaps may not make any sense to you. But God wants you to stand firm on the promise.
Psalms, hymn number 249.
We're asking every member to and those who are online, your friends and families, to contribute to the work of the First Congregation Church. Faith comes from hearing, and hearing comes from the Word of God. Amen. And this beautiful building and the work that we do throughout this community and thereafter only can happen with your love, support, and finances. As one of my old uh, Reverend Bats who baptized me at 11 years old when I gave my life to Christ at 11, in 1973, he used to say, we like the change, but we prefer the paper that's old. <laughs> he used to say, I remember that as a kid, I remember he used to say, he used to say, we like change, but we prefer the paper that's old. So I'm asking you, as you fill out your envelopes this week, throughout this time, that you have been commitment to us by the end of the year so we know what we can as a church, the diactic trustees and the ministerial staff working together, what we can do beyond these doors and within the church. So thank you. And if you don't have an envelope, there's one that's envelope right outside that door. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and next Sunday, I ask you to bring somebody for our potluck. Whether it be a family member, a friend, bring somebody with you. Because let us show others who Jesus Christ is. We are the light of the world. We are the salt on the food next week. No matter how good the food is, if our personalities don't welcome, then there's no salt, there's no good taste. And so next week I ask that you bring on the 20th, whatever you decide to sign up on the sheet downstairs today, please sign up and please commit to what you can give. This is our offering time. We have it because we give. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. I didn't even pray today. That's fine. Let's, let's, let's. Thank you, Sister D. Before we go into our offering, in memory of my sister, the prayers for this week on November 13, 2022. In memory of my sister, Heidi, I love you with mission. To Kim, Annie, Rose, and Evan. To Brian, Dale, Joe, Richie, Jeffrey, Gabrielle, Megan, and Jason, to Reverend Collins' family, to CJ, Brianna, Justice, Jesse's family, to the AMEC Church of Denomination, to prayers to Brother Boston's aunt, um, Mary, um, recovery at St. Peter's Hospital, prayers for his eyes and healing, to Pat, Joel, Judy, Jeff, Richie, Judy, Sam and Louis, to Shelley, to Bishop Ingram and Sister Ingram, and to anyone who is going through suffering. That means all of us. Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive our trespasses.
trust we have, and therefore we are never without. Amen. When cheerfully and obediently give back to God the portion that He requested of us, wherever so be. Well, I should speak some.
And guess what? There's still people in the community who still need us. We are still here because God is using us and he wants us to help. So when we see God face to face, he's going to say to every one of us, what did you do with my name? Well, God, we opened up the press. We opened up to the community in 1899. We opened up to the Thai chief. We opened up to Yoga. We opened up. That's what God did. He said, I know that. Then he's going to say, well done, good and faithful servant. And that's the blessings. Thank you, Brother John, for that. I appreciate that. What a great way to end our sermon to our service today. The wise may bring their learning. The wise may bring their learning. Hymn number. Four, four, four.